Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Deathless Shot. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. The Magic Detective. And there's your card, Don. There, behind the mirror. Well, how on earth do you do it, Blackstone? Oh, this trick's too complicated to explain, Don. Magicians have to practice for years before they can do it well. Aren't these guns interesting, Don? They're very old. Well, where did you get them, Blackstone? Oh, you should have been along that day, Don. I got a call one day to go and see Madame Bain. It's good yeah. to see you again. And it's good to see you, my dear Blackstone. Sit down, sit down. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I wanted to see you ever since I heard you were in town. Professionally, I mean. Oh, what seems to be the trouble, madam? Do you want me to produce a rabbit out of a hat? No rabbits this time, Blackstone. A necklace. You've lost a necklace? Yes. Perhaps you remember it. I used to wear it all the time. Rubies and pearls set in old gold. Well, of course I remember it. It was almost as much a part of you as your voice. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me it's been stolen. Yes, two months ago. But, my dear lady, surely you must have done something about it before this. It was insured, and the insurance company has been doing everything they can. But they've found practically nothing. Have you any clues? Yes, one. Have you ever heard of an old curio dealer named Felix Vonderman? Yes, I have. He dabbles in magic a bit, I believe. That's the one. Well, what makes you suspect him? The insurance company got back one of the stones. Oh. They're such odd shapes that they're easily identified. They found it at Felix Vonderman's shop. Could they pin anything on him? No, nothing. It seems he'd bought a huge collection of unset stones from a dealer. One of my rubies was among them. And the dealer? Perfectly reputable. He couldn't remember whether the ruby was among the stones or not. He'd been collecting the stones for months and sold the whole lot to Vonderman. None of the other stones were found at Vonderman? None. I have nothing more to go on, Mr. Blackstone. But I can't help feeling that Vonderman knows a great deal more than the insurance people suspect. Well, I think it's time I paid our friend Vonderman a visit. Uh, Mr. Vonderman? He's out. Something I can do? I just wanted to prowl around through the shop, if I may. Go ahead. I'll be in the back room if you need me. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, we are in luck, Rhoda. The old boy's out. I don't get it. If Vonderman really stole the necklace and took the stones out of their settings, you don't think he'd be fool enough to leave them lying around this joint, do you? Sometimes things are best hidden if their hiding place is obvious. Well, maybe you're right. Let's get going. There's no telling when our little pal might come back. And he might not like far to find us prowling around. Hey, how am I supposed to know if I find the jewels? I can't tell the real thing from a fake for the life of me. Here, take this. Well, what do I need a flashlight for? It's broad daylight. It's an ultraviolet flashlight, Rhoda. Turn it on every jewel or pseudo jewel you see. If the stones glow, the stones are real. Oh, golly, that's wonderful. Well, here goes. There are loads of stones in this drawer, Blackstone. We'll flash the light on them. I'll be looking over here in this counter. We'll just have to search until Vonderman comes back or we find the stones. If they're here. That's right, if they're here. Whew, I'm dead. We've gone through practically every nook and cranny in the place. And not a trace of anything but junk. Help me with this tray of stones. They're, they're mostly rubies and pearls, and those are the stones that Madame Benya had in the necklace. Okay. 
Hey, Blackstone. Hmm? Look. Well, that ruby is glowing as though it were on fire. And, and here's another. And another. Uh, put them in your pocket, Rhoda. I hear something. Shut the drawer. I don't hear anything. Listen. Footsteps. They sound as though they were coming here. Move away from this tray. Come over here and look at this suit of armor. Ah, good evening, Mr. Blackstone. I beg your pardon. I don't believe I know you. We've never met officially, Mr. Blackstone, but I've had the privilege of watching your performance many times. I am Felix Wonderman. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> Miss Prent and I were looking at some of your stock. You have some very interesting things here, Mr. Wonderman. Uh, have you seen the things in the back room? Uh, no, we haven't. Oh, but you must. I have some old magic apparatus that you'd find very interesting, I'm sure. I'm afraid it'll have to wait till some other time. We were just leaving. Oh, come, come. I, I insist. Uh, Rhoda, I'll stay and see Mr. Vonderman's exhibit. You run back to the hotel, tell our friends that uh, I may be a few minutes late. Oh, I should be very much disappointed if Miss Brent did not see the exhibit also. Come this way, please. Uh, there. A very little magic museum, is it not? Goodness, Vonderman. You have some amazing things here. I'd like to come back at my leisure sometime and really go through your collection. I know you're in a hurry today, but here is one thing you must see before you dash off. Here's an old mirror and an old vase. And here is a pair of dueling pistols. Oh, yes. Very old. You have to load them through the muzzle. Yes. Well, what's the trick, Mr. Varnerman? I take one of these pistols and shoot it at the mirror. You will previously have chosen a card. When the mirror breaks... The card will be found in the shards of broken glass. It's amazing. Would you like to try it, Blackstone? Well, I'm afraid I have oh, the come, time. Oh, come, come now, Mr. Blackstone. It'll only take a minute. If you load the gun, I'm an old man and my eyes aren't what they used to be. Very well. But uh, we'll have to hurry. Uh, here is the powder. You pour that in first. Yes. And now a wad of paper. And a bullet. I'll ram it down hard. Now, more paper. Yeah. Here's the first gun, Vonderman. You hold it while I load the second. So that's how they used to load guns. Uh, yes, Rhoda. Yeah. Here's the second gun, Vonderman. Uh, thank you. Now I will show you the trick. Raise your hands to the ceiling. Hmm? Well, is this part of the trick? Yes, Miss Brent. The best part is when you hand over the rubies you have in your pocket. What are you talking about? I noticed that three of the rubies were gone from that tray when I came in. I also noticed that you have been keeping your hand over that pocket in your jacket. You, you're crazy. Oh, no, I'm not. The rubies, please. Give them to him, Rhoda. The Blackstone. Give them to him. Okay, here you are. But you wouldn't get these if you didn't have those blunder buses pointed at us. <laughs> Thank you. And now I'm very sorry that I'm forced to kill you both. <laughs> you can't. You wouldn't dare. There are people on the street outside. That they'd hear the shot. No, but that can't be helped. You can hardly leave this place alive, knowing what you know. <laughs> it's no use, Wonderman. You can't shoot us. But the guns. You loaded them yourself. I, I saw you. It's I saw no you. Use. I saw it's you. It's no use, Wonderman. You cannot escape. Gunpowder cannot compete with magic. <laughs> I don't understand. Why weren't you blown to bits when those guns went off? I recognize the guns, Don. It's quite a famous old trick. The ramrods of those guns are hollow at one end. When I tamp the bullet down with the hollow end, the bullet in the gun muzzle would pack into the ramrod and come out with it. So he really unloaded the guns while he seemed to be loading them. He left only blank charges. Vonderman just collected magic stuff to sell. He really knew nothing about it. But you did. So another mystery was solved by magic. <laughs> Uh, Don, uh, lend me a dollar, will you? Sure. Sure, here you are. Thank you. Uh, what are you going to do, a trick? That's right. Now I hold the bill so that the picture of President Lincoln is upright and facing me. Uh, like this, see? Oh, I see. The fives in the corners are right side up, too. That's right, Rhoda. Well, what happens next? I want you to watch the top of the bill and make sure I don't reverse it. You mean, uh, see that you don't turn it upside down? That's right, Don. Now I fold the bill in half. Lengthwise, like this. The upper edge is still up, isn't it? Well, I, I think so. Well, I'll open the bill again to prove it. Upper edge up. See? Ah, I see. Go on. Now, I fold the bill in half away from me. Only this time I fold it in half lengthwise. Like this. 
Well, that fold should come in the middle of Lincoln's face, shouldn't it, Blackstone? That's right. And then I fold it in half again, the same way. Now, it's three folds I've made, and the top of the bill is still up, isn't it? Yes. Looks that way to me. What are you going to do now? Now I'm going to unfold the bill, and you'll see that Lincoln's head is still facing me. But it will be upside down. Oh, but that, that's impossible. Is it, Rhoda? Look. What? See what? Lincoln's face down? It's upside down, just as you said it would be. Well, it just can't be done. But it has been done, Rhoda. And I'll be back in a minute to tell you how. You try while I'm gone and see if you can work. make out with reversing Mr. Lincoln, Rhoda? Just exactly as I thought I would. It's not possible to turn him over without turning him over. But you just saw me do it. Oh, show me, Blackstone, please. All right. Here we are. Lincoln, right side up. I fold the bill in half, lengthwise. Bring the lower edge up to the top edge, don't I? Yeah, that's right. Now I fold it in half, taking care to fold it away from me, and do the same thing again, also away from me. Now open it up. When I unfold the bill, I unfold it toward me. This really reverses the bill, though it doesn't look as if it did. Practice the trick, Rhoda. You'll see that it's one of the simplest I've ever showed you, and one of the best. That was swell, Blackstone. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of the riddle of the other eight ball and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. Blackstone.